can't draw, it's like choking. Ooh, girl. <laughs> It's Jay and today I'm here with my July wrap-up for 2019. I read a total of 15 books so I'm going to be splitting this into two parts. This is part one featuring the first eight books that I read this month. So without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> the first book that I read for the month of July is Sleeping Freshman Never Lie by David Lubar and I gave this a two out of five stars. This follows a boy named Scott who is a freshman in high school and he is learning to navigate his new surroundings, his new social status, and his new crush. And that's when his mother announces that she is pregnant, so he decides that he is going to write a notebook to his unborn sibling, telling him basically how to survive high school. Although I wasn't the biggest fan of this book, I think the target audience would really enjoy it. It was a lot of little boy humor, if that makes sense, like a lot of fart jokes, a lot of poop jokes, that kind of thing. Things that middle school boys like, freshman boys like. So I think on that aspect, it would have hit home if I was into that kind of thing, but as a 23 year old, I'm kind of over the poop and fart jokes. I also found it very predictable and boring, a bit bland in my opinion, but again, I'm definitely not the target audience. I feel like if I gave this to my 12 year old cousin, they'd probably love it, so take that as you will. The next book that I have is a graphic novel and it's called Are You Listening by Tilly Walden and this follows a girl named B, who decides to run away from home and she meets up with a woman named Lou. They set off on a road trip to West Texas where Lou states that she has some family. As they are making their way to West Texas, a lot of emotional information is brought to light. So Lou tries to be the mentor that B never had and it's basically the story of that. I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. It was interesting. I feel like that's not the word I'm looking for. It covered a lot of emotional topics like sexual abuse and not feeling like you belong, a lot of sexuality stuff, and I think that it did it in a respectful way. I really liked the mixture of colored and black and white panels, and I did really like the characters of Lou and B. I think that they were very good for each other. For most of the book though, I was very confused with what was actually going on. I think at one point there was like a magical cat. I I honestly don't really know what to think of this, so I'm giving it the average 3 out of 5. So the next book is also a graphic novel and it is called Mooncakes. This is by Suzanne Walker and Wendy Wu and I'm giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So this follows Nova who is a teen witch who lives with her two grandmothers in New England. When reports of a white wolf begin trickling into town, Nova goes to investigate and that's when she discovers her old childhood friend Tam is back in town. This discovery occurs when she finds them battling a horse demon in the middle of the woods. So now Nova needs to help Tam fight this horse demon and the cult that called upon it before it is too late. I think that this graphic novel was really cute. It was all about friendship and falling in love and finding yourself. I think that the main characters were very cute. I loved watching them grow back together after being apart for so long. I loved the diversity in this book. The two main characters are both Chinese American, Tam is non-binary, Nova is hard of hearing. I also really liked the grandmothers in this book. Nova's grandparents were just so sweet and supportive of not only Nova but also of Tam. I think that the family dynamics in this book were just really well done. The only downfall that I really have for this graphic novel is that I wish there was more of a backstory for the characters and the relationships that they had. I don't know if I just am not aware of them because I'm pretty sure this was a webcomic. I could be wrong. Don't hold me to that actually being true. But I just wish I knew more about their background and why things were the way they were. So the next book that I have is He Said, She Said and this is by Gigi Gorgeous. This is Gigi Gorgeous's memoir. She is a YouTube star who is transgender and she's basically like a big sensation. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. I was really excited about this because I've been a fan of Gigi for the long 
longest time. I've watched her YouTube channel since the very beginning. I just find her so funny. I really like learning more about her journey and the feelings that she was having throughout her life. I think that she was very honest and open with everything that she went through and I think that that will probably help a lot of people and also just this cover is stunning and I'm just like obsessed with her to be honest. It's not something that I would ever read again to be honest, but I still liked it for a one-time thing. The next book that I have is Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. This is another one that I'm giving 3.5 out of 5 stars. This takes place in 2044 in a world where a virtual reality called The Oasis is alive and thriving. When the creator of The Oasis dies, he created a scavenger hunt of sorts for the egg, which grants the finder the rights and fortune that come with the Oasis. Wade Watts has dedicated his life to solving the puzzles and clues that the creator left behind based off of the 80s pulp culture that he was obsessed with during his life. He quickly realizes that people will actually kill for this prize and he needs to fight for his life in order to win and save the Oasis. I definitely liked the second half of the book a lot better than the first. I found the first to be very slow and just bogged down by a lot of info dumping and just like too many 80s references. The second half of the book is when the action really picked up and I became a lot more invested in the story. I loved the concept of the Oasis. I found it so interesting and I loved learning about all the different worlds that were inside the Oasis and how they each had like different rules. I liked trying to figure out the riddles and clues myself. I loved the mention of Monty Python, the Holy Grail, because I grew up watching that with my dad, so it was just like really cool to see it in a book. Definitely wish that the Oasis was a real place that you could log into. I'm definitely interested in watching the movie now just because I want to see how they compare to each other, but 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book, honestly, I don't even really want to talk about because I disliked it so much. It's Solving Cadence More by Gregory Sterner. I gave this a 1 star. It took me like two months to read. It follows a girl. Her name is Cadence Moore and she is the next pop sensation until she disappears one day. This man named Karl Marx decides that he is going to start a podcast to try to discover what actually happened to her because her case ended up being a cold case where nobody knows what really happened that night. So he goes off and tries to solve the mystery and murder of Cadence Moore and that is this story. It was so boring. I hated the writing style pretty much every other paragraph was sexist, racist, discriminatory in some way. Just not a fan. Don't pick up this book, honestly. It's a waste of your time. That's all I have to say. The next book that I have, I actually really, really like. So it was a big step up from Cadence Moore. But it is The Program by Suzanne Young, and I ended up giving this 4.5 out of 5 stars. It follows a world where suicide has become an epidemic, and the government decides to create a program that takes teenagers who are at risk and puts them into this program to basically rid them of this sickness. If entered into the program, your memories are erased and your past is altered after a six-week treatment plan to have you re-enter the real world. After losing her brother to suicide, Sloan and her boyfriend James are flagged as possible candidates for the program, and it's basically the story of them being admitted. I definitely enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I was going to because the whole idea and concept of suicide and depression being contagious really rubbed me the wrong way, but after I thought about it a little while, I was like, this is a fictional story, Jan, calm yourself. So after I got past that, I ended up really liking this. I'm definitely intrigued by the program. I want to know the motives behind the creation of it. I definitely think that there's an alternative reason behind it than what they are saying, but I'm hoping that that's going to be brought into the second book. I really liked Sloan and James, especially together. I shipped them so hard. I really liked their relationship. It didn't feel forced to me in any way. I just really liked them together, which leads me to the one complaint that I have of this book is the unnecessary love triangle. I didn't see the point of it. Realm really pissed me off. I was not a fan of him. I could just tell that something was very off with him and I knew I wasn't gonna like him by the end and I was correct, but I'm definitely intrigued for the second book. I want to pick it up like right now but I have other books to read so I'm not going to but definitely 
check this out because I think it's very underrated. And then the final book that I'm going to be talking about in part one of the wrap-up is The Opposite of Always by Jason A. Reynolds and this follows a boy named Jack who meets a girl named Kate one night at a party and they hit it off right away and that's when Jack discovers that Kate is sick and she ends up dying. That's not a spoiler because it happens within the first like 20 pages. It's on the back of the book, so. So obviously Jack is heartbroken after Kate dies until he wakes up at the party once again, meeting Kate all over again. This makes Jack decide that this is his second chance at love to save Kate from her sickness. But as time goes on and Jack starts to change little things that happen, he quickly realizes that his decisions affect everybody in his life and he needs to decide who he is willing to hurt or lose in order to save Kate. I was a huge fan of this book. I gave it a four out of five stars. I loved the time travel loop of the book the story was just really intriguing to me. I love trying to figure out what Jack was going to do every time he was sent back to the party and how that was going to affect the different people in his life. I really loved every single character in this book and the relationships that they had with one another. I just thought they were really well developed. I think that Franny and Jill were great additions to the story and I loved seeing all four of them interact with each other. I desperately want a spin-off book that follows Jill and Franny. I just think they were adorable and just such good friends and just together they were great. I also think that Jack and Kate were an adorable couple and I was definitely rooting for them the entire story. I wanted everything to work out in the end. The only reason I'm not giving it a full five out of five stars is because I did feel like it started to drag on a little bit and it was just a little bit too long for me but I still really enjoyed the book nonetheless. Alright guys so that was my part one wrap-up for July 2019. That was the first eight books that I read this month. Check out part two which will be up probably in the next couple of days for the next seven. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! Yeah.